Hi friends, welcome to Curious with channel once again. I am Dr. Masina. Today we will learn about some important neurologic diseases in horses. I can't include all the neurologic diseases in one video. So here I included 5 diseases which are uh, important and mainly included the points essential for exams and giving emphasis on differential diagnosis. So the first one is Wobler syndrome. Wobler syndrome is also known as cervical vertebral malformation because it is the cause of this disease. It is a syndrome of neurological deficits caused by compression of the cervical spinal cord. This is an x-ray of cervical spinal cord you can see here and in this picture you can see clearly the compression of spinal cord in the cervical region. The classic sign is a wobbling or stumbling gait. Is, these uh, uh, clinical signs are common in equine wobblers and also canine wobblers as well. This is a picture showing a stumbling gait and hose. You can see the crossing over of the hind legs here. And this is a peculiar sign, a clinical sign seen in canine wobblers. Other signs include an uneven spastic and exaggerated gait, abnormal wear of front toes or unusual soles on front heels from overreaching and knuckling over of the fetlocks and even falling. This condition is usually observed in younger horses less than 5 years of age and typically this condition does not cause changes in the cerebrospinal fluid. And mainly this disease is uh, diagnosed by radiology that is x-ray we can see the compression clearly and there is medical and surgical management like decompression surgery so I am not going through the details of all those things and now moving on to the second condition that is equine herpes myeloencephalopathy. This disease is caused by equine herpes virus 1 which is common in host population. And in extremely rare cases, equine herpes virus 4 can develop into equine herpes myeloencephalopathy. Here you can see the equine herpes virus infection population that is horses latently infected with equine herpes virus 1 or 4. Commonly it is equine herpes virus 1 and reactivation of virus from latency leading to nasal shedding of infectious virus and this will lead to infection of young horses. Recruitment of new host into the cycle and again leading to establishment of viral latency and infecting the adult horses again. Clinical signs are typically related to hind limb paresis, bladder dysfunction and fecal retention. Other clinical signs include fever and this virus usually causes a biphasic or two phase fever that is host will have fever on day one or two then there will be no fever for a few days and on day six or seven there will be fever again and neurological signs may not be present until the second fever and some hoses may not develop a fever at all. Other signs are nasal discharge, depression, incoordination, hind limb weakness, loss of tail tone, loss of bladder tone, dog sitting position, leaning against a fence or wall to maintain balance and recumbency or inability to raise. Then here you can see the peculiar dog sitting posture in horses. So our, our outcomes of equine herpes virus infection hoses are equine herpes myeloencephalopathy as the condition we are discussing now that is neurological then it can cause abortion, respiratory signs and neonatal death as well. 
and there will be sandochromic or yellow csf from the breakdown of rbcs that are associated with the vasculitis induced by the herpes virus so this is uh, sandochromic or yellow csf caused by breakdown of rbcs and this sandochromic csf is used as a tool to uh, differentially diagnose this disease coming to the treatment there is no cure for equine herpes myeloencephalitis supportive care is administered including the use of nsaids and uh, like such as phenylbutazone or fronixin meglumin to reduce the clinical signs like fever inflammation and pain corticosteroids have been used but there is no evidence of benefit also antiviral drugs such as acyclovir have been used and their value in horses with uh, this infection is also unknown coming to the third condition that is hepatoencephalopathy which is caused by severe hepatic dysfunction leading to cerebral impairment so this is a syndrome characterized by abnormal mendation due to protein and other metabolites crossing the blood brain barrier in severe hepatic dysfunction leading to diffuse cerebral impairment this is the pathophysiology of hepatoencephalopathy when there is liver failure it will lead to uh, accumulation of ammonia in the blood that is hyperammonemia and in systemic circulation and this ammonia this high concentration of ammonia will cross the blood brain barrier and leading to increased ammonia levels in the brain and there will be lactate accumulation in the brain and both the systemic inflammation and this lactate accumulation in the brain will cause microglial activation and increased level of pro inflammatory cytokine and neuro inflammation and eventually leading to encephalopathy this condition is usually caused by severe hepatic insufficiency and the course may be acute as seen in tylers disease or can be chronic seen in ragwort or crotalaria poisoning and rarely portosystemic shunts coming to the clinical signs there will be abnormal mendation from depression dementia to coma here you can see the head head pressing the peculiar sign of hepatoencephalopathy and diagnosis is by history and clinical signs which are suggestive and confirmation is by presence of laboratory findings indicating of heart failure coming to the fourth condition that is equine protozoal myeloencephalitis or epm this is most commonly caused by the parasite sarcocystic neurona and rarely by neospora hugesi The dead end host for this parasite is horses and definitive host host in US is opossum. So this is the life cycle of sarcocystic neurona. The definitive host is opossum where the sarcocystic neurona sexual reproduction occurs and because of the fecal or urine contamination it can cause uh, it it can come come through food or water contamination that is the excrete of the definitive host and it can come to a brand host like horses then you can see the other uh, many intermediate host here and uh, uh, in the intermediate host there will be sarcocystic neurona as sexual reproduction and by predation or scavenging it will again reach the definitive host that is opossum and the cycle continues 
ഹോഴ്സസ് ആർ ഇൻഫെക്റ്റഡ് ബൈ ഇൻജെക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് സാക്കോസിസ്റ്റിക് ന്യൂറോണാസ് പോറോസസ് ഇൻ കണ്ടാമിനേറ്റഡ് ഫീഡ് ഓഫ് വാട്ടർ ദ ഓർഗാനിസം അണ്ടർഗോസ് ഏർലി അസെക്ഷൽ മൾട്ടിപ്ലിക്കേഷൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഷൈസു ഗണി ഇൻ ദ എക്സ്ട്രാ ന്യൂറൽ ടിഷ്യൂസ് ബിഫോർ പാരസെറ്റിസിങ് ദ സി എൻ എസ് ദീസ് ആർ ദ പോസിബിൾ റൂട്ട്സ് ഓഫ് സാക്കോസിസ്റ്റിക് ന്യൂറോണ ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ഇൻ ഹോഴ്സസ് this the first one is uh, the sporocyst in contaminated food will reach the hosts and the sporocyst penetrate the intestinal epithelium and travel to somatic tissues via the blood vessels and asexual reproduction of schistogeny in the somatic tissues produces merozoites and merozoites released in the blood travel to brain and spinal cord and merozoites infect the uh, infect the neural cells in cns developing schizons cause pressure on the surrounding nervous tissue and neutral cells die and merozoites are released into the cns and csf EPM lesions in the spinal cord may result in demarcated areas of spontaneous sweating or loss of reflexes and cutaneous sensation so the demarcated areas of spontaneous sweating will be there and the most common signs of brain disease in horses with EPM are depression head tilt and facial paralysis any cranial nerve nucleus may be involved causing seizures visual deficits including abnormal manes responses or behavioral abnormalities typically epm does not cause head pressing but may be possible and in addition epm infection does not typically change the csf without treatment epm may progress to cause recumbency and death postmortem diagnosis is confirmed by demonstration of protozoa in cns lesion on the basis of distinctive morphology or by immunohistochemical staining you can see a stained slide here and the uh, this sarcocystic neurona sporosis can be seen and also the inflammatory cells testing of for sarcocystic neurona specific antibody is the basis for presumptive antimortem diagnosis of epm serologic test for specific antibodies against whole sarcocystic neurona this example indirect fluorescent antibody test or sarcocystic neurona surface antigen scan can be used as a diagnostic tool and fd approved treatment of epm are ponazuril and diclosuril and a combination of sulfadiazin and pyrimethamine coming to the fifth condition this verminous encephalomyelitis this can be the etiology is uh, can be varied like many parasites can cause this disease there can be aberrant parasite migration caused by strongylus vulgaris strongylus equinus or drachea megastoma or can be caused by neurotropic nematodiasis caused by angulostrongus candonensis lung parasite of rat then halicephalobus gingivalis and ceteria species aberrant migration of helmint or fly larvae through the cns of horses is uncommon but is a reported cause of neurologic disease
they cause inflammation associated parasitic migration through the central nervous system and the signs can be variable there will be multifocal neurologic this neurological disease hindquarter ataxia progressing to recumbency diagnosis by csf analysis and postmortem histopathology elevation in eosinophils will be found in csf you can see eosinophilia in the slide there and here this is the first stage larva with crooked tail and a posteriorly directed spine which is shown by arrowhead in the cerebellum of a horse so that's all about the five equine neurologic diseases thanks for listening and if you find this video useful please like it comment your suggestions and share with your friends if you are watching this video and not subscribed this channel yet please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time i upload a video i will be uploading at least one video every week so see you soon with another video thank you